What's up, what's up? It's time for Done Way Past Funny. With your host, G.D. Fenderson. Join us as we take a look back at the early works of seasoned comedians before they were seasoned with this week's guest, William Conway. It's time to get down and get dope with Done Way Past Funny. Hi, I'm G.D. Fenderson, certified French humorist and host of Done Way Past Funny. Thank you for joining us as we continue our interview with William Conway. Enjoy. You know, speaking of hangers and stuff, I have to say one of the things about Sioux Falls that I found the most surprising is that uh, I used to go to the Planned Parenthood there all the time because that's where you can get free condoms. Uh, but they had wire hangers in their like lobby area, <laughs> and I just was like, is that for when the power goes out? They didn't. They didn't. <laughs> they still they did not like that manual. joke at all. That yeah. was. If they lose the power, yeah. they can still go use the, man- <laughs> use the manual technique. Now, yeah. you told me that story, but it has something to do with single de Mayo. You said you. So how, how, was that, how did that relate to single de Mayo? It was okay. So it happened on single de Mayo, oh, and oh, where she oh, was parked okay. at. Was okay. this place called Rio Bravo, which was having like okay. huge Cinco de Mayo drinking deals. Okay. And so, I mean, it was just motherfucking packed out of that place. Okay. Cause I have like, I have a, a, a very well written Juneteenth thing that oh. basically, well, now I can do it Juneteenth, but I can also rework it. Well, I can rework it for any drinking holiday. Right. As the premise is that nobody knows about Juneteenth because it's not a drinking holiday. All of our famous drinking holidays are ethnic holidays. No, so all of the you know all the famous ethnic holidays are drinking holidays. So um, St. Patrick's Day, um, Cinco de Mayo, you know they're all you know the ethnic holidays that have alcohol are the ones you know about. So if you want Juneteenth to be popular, turn it into a drinking holiday and get an alcohol sponsor. And then everybody will celebrate Juneteenth, and then we won't need February. See, and that's the whole premise of the story. So I could do that joke. Um, I could do that joke in February for Black History Month. I can do it for St. Patrick's Day. I could do it for Cinco de Mayo. I can do it for July Fourth. I can do it for Juneteenth. Right. I can do it for Mother's Day. Not Mother's Day. <laughs> Veterans Day and Labor Day. So I have adapted it so I could do it for like eight different holidays just so I don't have right. to wait till Juneteenth comes around and do right. it one time a year. Right. And that's and that's kind of what I was saying is, you know, I never really thought about, I don't know why either. I never really thought about the fact that I could just change, I could get into that story in a different way and not even associate it with Cinco de Mayo because like the story itself really has nothing to do with that. So that I, could, I probably could uh, make that to where, but I've really got to cut some fat on it for sure too, because I think that was one of the other, you know, a lot of times I think if I have a joke that's not working and uh, Nathan Holtz was probably uh, in the last few years, or at least when I first started coming back to comedy, uh, he was probably one of the, the best voices of, uh, you know, comedic advice that I had and uh you know and he generally was telling me that I needed to cut fat on a lot of my jokes which is true cuz I get really windy when I'm talking about stuff but I like to paint a clear picture also yeah but and, but sometimes you can do that with um fewer words uh, there's right. a um a comedian I I'm from friends with a guy named Dylan Brody out out of LA um he's one of their there's not many comedians that actually have any influence over what I do. And, and the thing is, he doesn't have influence over what I do as much as the fact that sometimes if I'm on stage, I have like a little voice in my head. And there's like four comedians that have given me advice that actually will kick in and do a situation will kick in. And so a lot of times I'll find myself improvising, uh, you know, especially, you know, if somebody yells something from the crowd, they'll go like, oh, I got something for that. But it's not something I've ever worked on. It's just like, that reminds me. And I want to do something. So I will go. And as I'm doing it, I'll hear like Dylan Dylan Brody's voice saying, fewer words, less words, less is more, less words, you know, not so many right. words. 
brief, you know, and then and I hear like Christopher Titus saying, you know, don't give up control. Um, or actually, well, actually, he says it in a different way, but that's my version of it. It is because it's my version of don't get don't give up control because when you're on the stage, that's how you get your. I've never been heckled on stage in the in the nine and a half years or nine. I'm sorry, nine years and one month I've been doing comedy. I've never been heckled ever well, during a performance, uh, not once. I've I've only had it happen maybe maybe twice. Um, it happened that uh, at that um, at that last comic standing thing. Um, and the only reason I say I got heckled is because uh, what happened is I told a bunch of Catholic jokes, and Sioux Falls is a notoriously uh, very Catholic town, and I was uh, not being nice to Catholics. And somebody shouted out, "Move on!" <laughs> 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 and uh which and you know what i didn't even said, address Mom! it i just i just no. i just i moved on i was like you know what he's probably right this these i need to cut away from this <laughs> but then uh the other time i got heckled I was in sioux city iowa i was doing a show at marty's tap and i was doing a bit about uh gardening of uh, what is it about women over 60 they can't do their gardening without being bent over at the waist facing the street, you know? And, and, and I do like, I bend over at the way, like I basically just do the old lady gardener to the whole crowd, just showing my ass to the whole crowd. And then like, I get up and I turn around and this old lady, like right in the front, she's like, I'm over 60 and I don't do it that way. And I said, ma'am, I understand you're a professional. You get on your knees. Uh, so, <laughs> and it was it was great. She she was very shocked by it, but I I imagine it was her husband. We didn't talk after the show or anything, so I don't know for sure. But there was an older gentleman next to her that, and the whole the whole bar went up. And that guy, she was the only one that didn't really like my quip, and that's okay. I don't care if they like the quip as long as everyone else likes the quip. That's what we're going for. That's cool. That's now. Um, obviously, I'll, obviously what you, um, I was going to have you promote shows, but since you're doing the COVID thing, well, the uh, one show, there is one show that I would like to promote. Um, and okay. it's not, it's not until January, but January 12th, I will be competing for comic of the year at the icon lounge in Sioux Falls. So I definitely want people to be aware of that. Um, that's going to be a huge show. Um, there's a number of really good comics. Anybody that won the Larry Brinkman award this year will be on that show, or at least be offered an opportunity to be on that show. Um, and so I'm very excited about that. Uh, but that's not until January 12th. Okay. Um, now j just out of well, actually January will be here before you know it. But, no um, kidding. No kidding. It is November 1st. Well, it's yeah. whatever day you want it to be, I guess. No, 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 no. I don't mind people knowing that this is November 1st because I, I, right. I, because I, it's going to take me a few days to, to edit this. And because I'm a very busy man, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm doing 11 hours a week of live streaming with, you know, between the coffee and the dog and the, and then I, I, um, well, I don't, and I help out the Reverend with his show on Sundays. Uh, right, and then I have my own stuff that I'm doing in the evenings, and I have my own shows that I do. So I'm doing, I'm doing my work, and then I got to drive the Reverend to his gigs as well, because the Reverend doesn't have a license. Believe it or not, Doctor Reverend Jelly Roll does not have a license. He's not licensed to drive. If he gets behind the wheel, he could, you know, he's. he's so I have to drive him because I have a license, and he doesn't. That's that. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, and and, like, and and like, I'm just saying. So this is November. For, oh, this I'm looking at October. Fuck. That's that. Okay. So yeah, November first. Yeah, Wednesday. <laughs> so, so so like we yeah. got the between the two of us, we have five gigs. We between the two of us, we have five shows in the next ten days. Oh wow! So, yeah. So if I'm not performing, I'm driving him to his gigs. So, yeah. well, I just said that because it's like I said, time just flies. You know, time fucking flies. You know, I don't mind people knowing this is November first as well. That's the point because by the time I get this shit done, and it, like I said, January will be here before you know it. And so, how can people support you 
at the January 12th Icon Lounge. Um, uh, I don't, so I don't think tickets are on sale yet, but it is going to be, I, I, I don't know how the voting is going to take place for that. Um, have you ever done that? Uh, have you ever done that um, contest or that venue before? Um, no, I have never. So, uh, I mean, I would imagine that it's similar to what they do throughout the year, but I have no idea, uh, what exactly is going on. Um, but, uh, I would imagine it's, it's probably just the judges. They have three, they generally have three judges and I have no idea who the judges will be for this. But speaking of judges, uh, I am actually trying to get a hold of my sentencing judge and I'm asking him to be my guest of honor for the show. Um, because like, uh, that dude changed my life and he, you know, um, you know, I I've said it a bunch of times and I know a lot of people don't understand it, but like prison was the best thing that could have happened to me. And it was a necessary thing that I think that I had to go through to become a, a different and better person. Um, and, um, you know, it doesn't work like that for everybody, but it did work like that for me, you know, and, uh, I have a, a deep appreciation for my sentencing judge, judge Joseph Nealis. Uh, and, uh, and if, if he would do me the honor of being my guest of honor for that show, like, I mean, I don't even care if I win, if, you know, I just want to see, uh, you know, I would just love to see him sitting there at a table knowing that my life was different because of him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, do you have the same appreciation for Flores? that you do for that <laughs> dude actually oh my god i'll tell this story real quick so when my um when my dad passed away uh, -huh. uh i didn't i <laughs> i didn't know like it had been years since i'd been in a flower shop because uh you know uh i went to prison for almost 10 years and then i get out and uh i don't really have a reason to go to a flower shop you know, so I, but then my dad died and my mother and I went into this flower shop in my hometown, um, you know, hundreds of miles away from where my crime took place. But the like setup of the flower shop was so similar to the place that I robbed that I legitly had a panic attack <laughs> and I had to go outside like, because I couldn't even handle being inside there. Um, uh, and like, like I just got this overwhelming feeling that I was about to fuck up my whole life just by being in that store. Mm -hmm. And so like, the only thing I can think is that like the imagery and the smells like took me back to all that time ago. And I thought I was in that time and space where, you know, I was about to make a decision that fucked up my whole life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. Like and so yeah, I had to, I had to do, I had to go outside and just sit in the fucking car and breathe. <laughs> like I couldn't even handle being in the flower shop. Now that that's that's embarrassing to talk about. <laughs> well, that that's okay. That's um that that's a good place for us to. So let's one more time remind people how they can stalk you on social media. Yeah, please. Uh, uh, all, yeah, all, uh, of your, all of your 19 aliases, give them all. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, oh, okay. So, William Conway on Facebook, William Conway on YouTube. Um, you can also, uh, it's also William Conway on the Star Maker app. Thank you.
And I'm trying to, I am trying to get to like, uh, 5,000 followers on there, uh, because uh, then I can get to the next level of status or whatever. Uh, so that would be really cool if you follow me on star maker. Um, and the one we'll see has a YouTube channel. You can view all three of my music, uh, singles from there uh spelled out the one we'll see um and then if you want to stream it on any music service it's available on pretty much any music service out there uh my instagram is conway comedy 81 and uh and that's pretty much all i'm on i think i think that's it oh and cameo again cameo uh i'm gonna be adjusting the price uh probably before this comes out i'll have adjusted the price already to 19.99 because that was the worst year of my life. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we got six. See, people don't people don't know this is six because I, I, I learned to count from a, a differently the, from a second grade girl named Janet. It's like this is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. See, so you can count up the ninety nine on your two fing on your ten fingers, right? That I'll just I mean, say that's what people were wondering was how I was doing this, and this was six. It's like <laughs> this is six, five, six. Man, I've seven, been taking eight, off my nine. shoe. <laughs> yeah, see, you can. Yes, yeah, so I said you could count up to ninety nine on your fingers. <laughs> of course, nowadays kids have calculators. <laughs> Dude, fancy even fancy phones. I remember I would have. I would have homework that would say printed on the homework. You can use a calculator if necessary. My dad would not allow you to use that calculator. He'd go, your calculator got to be right up here. That's that. Like I had one of those dads. Yeah. So my, well, my dad was uh, something of a math genius, but back then he didn't have the opportunity to be a math genius, so he was a numbers runner. Yeah, he was a organized crime. I but, see. Uh, but that's a different story for another time. Uh, <laughs> this is this is not coffee with the dog, where we tell those stories about our folks. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I look. I appreciate you doing this with me. Um, and uh, is there anything that you want to do on touch on before we close out here? Or we just make sure we got all your contacts and stuff out there. Any? Oh, any, uh, I wanted any, to. 
any I wanted to mention MindDogTV.com again. Uh, definitely check that out. Check out the sponsors. Check out the merch. Uh, there's even merch for the Church of Last Resort on there, so check that out. Uh, oh, and you do voice work also. You can yeah, no, you work. know what? So that's kind of relatively new. That's something that Matt has been giving me the opportunity to do these these voiceovers for commercials and stuff. That is so fun. I like that's one of my favorites. That's one of my favorite things to do is correct. And I don't know why. Like, like I didn't, I didn't realize how much I wanted to do commercials until I started doing them. <laughs> wait until you start to wait, wait until you start writing jingles. Then you'll really you'll be like, oh, yeah, no, I bet you I could do that because I used to, I used to have a bit about how um, a song stuck in your head and you get a song stuck in your head, like as you're going to work. And then all of a sudden what you're doing at work and the song that's stuck in your head, start colliding and you start making up new lyrics and it's all work related. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have a whole bit about that kind of thing happening. All right. So guy, look, I appreciate you. And, uh, as far as, as far as the real world goes and the fourth wall being broken, I will see you tomorrow morning, I guess. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll be there. Thank, thank yeah. you for having me. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, which will be m- m- coffee with the dog, and tomorrow's a long show. For actually, yes. by the time by the time you people see this, tomorrow will have been like a few days ago, or a week ago, and then you could actually catch it. It won't be live anymore. It won't be a live stream. It'll be like a week stream that you could actually catch on YouTube. But yeah, but but as far as C and I go, this is woo. This is mind blowing. This is just, <laughs> this is just so crazy. Because for us, it hasn't happened yet, but for you, it's already happened. <laughs> it's magic. No, so, so thanks. I, like, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, yeah. All right, and, and get and stay healthy. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that for sure. All right, All right man. Take care.